The hunt for exoplanets, planets in orbit around other stars in our galaxy, the Milky Way, has been going for over 30 years. And yet in that time, only five exoplanets have ever held the title of the closest known exoplanet to Earth. Because let's face it, yes, finding planets is very cool, but finding the ones closest to us here on Earth that who knows in the future if it turns out there's intelligent life on those planets maybe we might even be able to communicate with or maybe even visit one day those are the planets that people get the most excited about and the fun thing is since 2016 we've officially found the closest exoplanet to earth that's in orbit around a star there won't be another that holds the title so in this video we're gonna dive into the timeline of the closest known exoplanet to earth going all the way from the first exoplanet discovered in 1995 to the official closest exoplanet to earth in 2016. now of course exoplanets aren't the only place that astronomers are searching for life beyond Earth. Just this month, NASA launched the Europa Clipper mission that's going to try and work out if Jupiter's moon Europa is habitable. Through ground news, I can see that over 200 media outlets worldwide covered the launch. Some reporting that Europa Clipper is looking for alien life, others focusing on the spacecraft's size, while another source provides more context into the length of the mission. When it comes to media coverage of groundbreaking missions like this, it's really important that we read a large number of sources with a big diverse range of perspectives so that we can uncover insights that we otherwise would have missed. That's why I found that Ground News, who are the sponsor of today's video, are just an invaluable tool to help hone my critical thinking skills. I've been using it for over a year now, and whenever I read a news article, especially one shared with me by friends or family, I can really easily explore the different angles and interpretations from around the world. This massively helps me understand like the broader context to a news story, especially if there's any potential biases in there or any missing gaps in the reporting. It gives me a nice well-rounded view of a story. Plus, Ground News lets you cross-check facts across multiple sources really easily, which is so important when it comes to analyzing news stories on scientific discoveries. Ground News is the brainchild of ex-NASA engineer Harleen Kaur, and I can vouch for how good their science and space news coverage is as well, which really helps you avoid any of those fake space news stories that circle online all the time. I think their best feature is definitely their blind spot feed, where you can see which stories had little to no reporting on either side of the political spectrum, so I can find news that otherwise, you know, I might be missing or that challenges my worldview. Something that we're all about as scientists as well, so if you head to the link in the video description, ground.news slash Dr. Becky or scan the QR code up here, you'll get 40% off their Vantage plan, giving you unlimited access to all of their features. And it comes out at around about $5 a month. Plus subscribing to Ground News with that link directly supports my channel so I can keep making videos. So a big thanks to Ground News again. And now let's dive in to this timeline of the closest exoplanet known and start in 1995 with the discovery of 51 Pegasi B which was the very first exoplanet ever found orbiting a normal star. And it was huge news at the time. It came after 10 years of dedicated effort searching for stars that wobble. So when a star has a planet orbiting it, the star isn't stationary while the planet orbits around it. The two actually orbit the center of mass between them. So if you had a seesaw big enough to put the planet on one end and the star on the other end, the center of mass would be like where you would put the pivot point to perfectly balance both sides of the seesaw. And the bigger the planet, the more that point shifts away from the center of the star. In Jupiter and the sun's case, the center of mass between Jupiter and the sun is actually outside of the surface of the sun which means that the sun sort of wobbles around that point. And it was that wobble that astronomers were looking for as a Doppler shift to the light as the star moved towards and away from us wobbling around that center of mass. So through the late 80s and early 90s, people kept an eye on as many stars as they possibly could looking for these wobbles, knowing that it was most likely gonna just be a matter of time and also just complete luck, which of them had a big enough planet in orbit around it to cause a big enough wobble that the telescopes and instruments of the time were sensitive enough to be able to detect. 
And it was Mayer and Quellots in 1995 that announced that they had spotted the wobbling of the star 51 Pegasi, a sun-like star in the constellation of Pegasus, about 50 light years away from Earth, using the Elodie instrument at the Haute Provence Observatory in southern France. From that detection they made of the wobbling of the star, they were able to work out that that star had a planet in orbit around it that was at least half the mass of Jupiter, that completed one orbit every four days and orbited at a distance of around about 5% the Earth-Sun distance. Compare that to the solar system, that would be well within the orbit of Mercury around the Sun, making it the very first discovery of what's become known as a hot Jupiter, so a Jupiter-sized planet, but in orbit around its star so close that it gets to temperatures of around about a thousand degrees Celsius. Now, having proven that it was possible to do this in the years that followed, the exoplanet discovery started to come in thick and fast. Meaning that that very first exoplanet discovered, 51 Pegasi b, only held on to the title of the closest known exoplanet to Earth for just under a year, before Butler and Marcy announced the discovery of 47 Ursi Majoris b at a distance of 46 light years away from Earth, which was very different to 51 Pegasi b. Again, it was found using using this wobble method, but they had been monitoring the sun-like star 47 Ursi Majoris since 1987 using the Lick Observatory in California, and in that monitoring time of eight years had spotted that telltale wobble of the star that told them there was a planet around it, but one that took almost three years to orbit its star at a distance over twice the distance between the Earth and the Sun, making it the very first long period solar system-like planet to ever have been found, with a minimum mass estimated to be over twice that of Jupiter. That's a minimum mass because masses are always the most uncertain things that we can calculate when it comes to sort of discovering and analysing exoplanets, and it's because we don't know the angle of the orbit compared to us. So are we seeing the planet go around the star perfectly edge on? In that case, then yes, it's going to be that minimum mass that's calculated, it's going to be two times the mass of Jupiter. But if instead that orbit is slightly inclined to us and we're seeing it more like this angle, then actually the mass is going to be larger than that. Now, Ursa Majoris B held its title for around two years before two research teams, one working again at the Haute Provence Observatory and the other working again at the Lick Observatory, reported on the discovery of Jalice 876 B at a distance of 15.2 light years. So much closer to Earth this time, and it was yet another planet that had been found thanks to this wobble method, or to give it its scientific name, the radial velocity method. From this wobble, both teams calculated that the planet orbited the star roughly every 61 days, at about 20% of the Earth's sun distance, with a minimum mass estimated to be just over twice that of Jupiter. Now, what was most interesting at the time about this discovery of Jalice 876b is that the star it was orbiting around, Jalice 876, was a red dwarf star around about 30% of the mass at the Sun, which at the time was a really big challenge for planet formation models to explain, like how did something so big form so far out around something so relatively small for a star? Like the masses have to have separated out somehow, so a lot of all the models and theories had to be completely revised with this discovery. Now again, Jalice 876b only held on to the title for around about two years, before Hatzes and collaborators reported the discovery of Epsilon Eridani b in December 2000, at a distance of 10.5 light years away from Earth. Now this time Hatzes and collaborators actually combined observations of the wobble of this star, Epsilon Eridani, which is just a little bit smaller than the Sun, from loads of different research teams taken by six different instruments over a time period spanning 20 years. And they claimed that in that data you could tell there was a planet taking about seven years to orbit the star, at about 3.5 times the Earth's sun distance with a mass of at least 86% that of Jupiter. Now that was the best fit model for this planet in orbit around the star that they could get, but I'm sure you'll agree that as you look at this graph, the data, it's a little bit messy. So that result wasn't quite as strong of a claim of a discovery as other discoveries that were announced at the time. But by 2006, Fritz Benedict and collaborators had obtained Hubble Space Telescope data of this star, confirming it did indeed wobble with a period of 6.85 years, and derived a much more precise mass of the planet of 1.5 times the mass of Jupiter. 
Now, from this point onwards, through the 2000s and 2010s, there were so many notable exoplanet discoveries and milestones that were hit. From the launch of the Kepler Space Telescope and its discovery of thousands of exoplanets using the transit method, so looking for dips in a star's brightness as a planet passes in front of it, to planets discovered in their star's habitable zones, including Earth-sized planets, some even with water in their atmospheres, and of course even some seven and eight planet systems that were discovered that were reminiscent of the solar system. But during that time, there was no exoplanet discovered that was closer than that 10 and a half light years distance of Jalice 876b, at least until 2016, with the big news that the nearest star to the sun, Proxima Centauri, a red dwarf star just 12% of the mass of the sun at only 4.25 light years away from us, had a planet in orbit around it. Not only that, but it was a rocky Earth-sized planet as well. Now, this planet was first suspected to exist from 2013, thanks to this work by Tuomian collaborators, where they were monitoring nearby red dwarf stars and found two planet signals that looked promising for Proxima Centauri. That got astronomers very excited, so there was then a designated observational follow-up of Proxima Centauri B that was known as the Pale Red Dot Project, which culminated in Anglada Escude and collaborators in 2016, publishing this work using data from the Very Large Telescope in Chile, showing that Proxima Centauri B was definitely wobbling. And from that wobble could tell there was a planet in orbit around Proxima Centauri B that took 11.2 days to make one full orbit at a distance of 5% the Earth's sun distance with a mass at least 1.3 times the mass of Earth. Now, because Proxima Centauri, the star, is a red dwarf star, so it's much cooler and smaller than the sun, that meant that this planet that they found, despite orbiting, you know, closer than Mercury does to the sun, was still in what's known as the habitable zone. It was still receiving the right amount of energy from its star that would mean that, you know, it would have like a temperature that would be in the right range for liquid water to exist on the surface. This was the discovery that everyone had been hoping for. An Earth-like planet in our local area of the universe, just 4.5 light years away. And to give you an idea why it took so long for us to discover a planet around our nearest star. Compare the values on this radial velocity wobble data from 1995 when the first exoplanet was discovered. The values you can see are changing by like plus or minus 50 meters a second with errors on them spanning like plus or minus 10 meters a second. Whereas for Proxima Centauri b, the change in velocity that they detected was just plus or minus, what, three to four meters a second with an error of plus or minus 0.5 meters per second. You couldn't have detected Proxima Centauri b with the same instrument that you detected 51 Pegasi b because the uncertainties, the errors on the measurements were so big that the wobble of Proxima Centauri would have been within that error range. And since 2016, there's been two more candidate rocky exoplanets claimed to be in orbit around Proxima Proxima Centauri, making the prospect of any future like exploration of this system and the idea of finding life there so much more enticing. The problem still though is that four and a half light year distance. It would take light traveling at the fastest possible speed there is of just under 300 million meters a second, four and a half years to get from us here on Earth to Proxima Centauri b. So if we were going to communicate with any intelligent life that might be on these planets around Proxima Centauri, then if we were going to send a message, we send it with like radio signals, which is light, traveling at the speed of light. It takes four and a half years to get there. And then if they were going to send a reply back, it would take another four and a half years, meaning you would be waiting nine years for a reply. And if you were ever going to send a spacecraft to explore this system, it would also be limited by the speed of light, at least according to Einstein's theory of special relativity, which says you cannot go faster than the speed of light. That is if we ever figure out how to accelerate a spacecraft up to close to the speed of light. Our current capabilities don't go anywhere near that. So the current 
fastest ever speed achieved by like a, a human made spacecraft was by the Parker Solar Probe, which reached 176 kilometers a second. At that speed, it would still take 7,688 years to get there. Which I think just serves as a very sobering reminder that although exoplanet science has come on leaps and bounds in 30 years, so much so that now we're characterizing the atmospheres of exoplanets using the James Webb Space Telescope, space exploration, however, even with all of the engineering marvels that we've seen over the past few years, still has quite literally an astronomically long way to go. We're just warming up. We're just, we're just warming up. <laughs> Where does this actually... Okay, so it's about there. Perfectly balanced. I did this so easily before they... No! <laughs> Why can I do this so easily not when I'm doing a take and then... Okay. Orbiting so close into their star. 30 years. 40 really? Because people have been searching for it, they've just not found one since 19... I mean, the first one they found was 95, over 30 years. Yeah.